All right, guys, I got a great little job that you're gonna run into in the body shop all the time. You know, most people uh, think body shop, they think they, the car's wrecked real bad, and we fix a lot of those. But there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that we fix that uh, it's just little chips and nicks. And in this case, see this right here, where the paint's knocked off? Uh, that's what I'm gonna be fixing today. And this is gonna be great experience, because like I said, this, this, it may seem small, but you gotta be able to fix this. Because if you notice, this is a motorcycle fender. And if you watched one of my earlier videos, one of the first ones I did, I made a joke about how motorcycle people are picky. Well, they are because they can pick this thing up and look at every part of it. Now, there's a couple trick things about this. When I say trick, I mean different. They're gonna make it a little more difficult. I don't know if it's showing up, but that fender isn't all red. You notice the bottom, you notice this is black, it's faded, faded on up. I don't know if that's showing up very well or not. Uh, let me come around this side, see if you can see that. Okay. Now, I'll give you a little background on this history, or history on this uh, fender. Maybe you can see it now. My hand's putting prints in it. If you can see that, where it's faded. So we've got to be able to repair this. It, what happened was the chain guard, try and get this right. The chain guard came across here. The motorcycle, and as the suspension travels, this fender goes up and down, and it knocked this paint off and that's a little bit of body filler underneath of there and the reason there's body filler under there this is a totally custom made fender I'll show you what I mean you see how wide let me get this up here see how wide this fender is well this much of it let me get my hand right there this much of it has been welded on and see that's the kind of stuff you'll learn how to do in this class because we did it here see let me show you that's where the seam is on the inside. I'm showing you the inside of the fender. That's how much of that fender is welded on. <laughs> Pretty neat. But anyway, that's the kind of stuff, uh, I'm not necessarily gonna teach you in here how to, you know, we're not gonna take motorcycle fenders and, and customize them, but the skills you're gonna learn in here, you'll be able to do this kind of stuff. All right. When I said this, we did this earlier this year, uh, a lot of you probably didn't see it because this was one of my seniors who's out on work-based learning. Uh, I showed him how to do this and we worked on it together before he got his job. Uh, he works for, he delivers paint material and stuff for a local business now, but he's not here. And since we did this, the customer brought it back, but it's gonna make a great lesson for you guys. I've got, I've got 80 grit, just folded over, a little piece of 80 grit board paper folded over Try and get this camera situated right. Now, all I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna block this. this. You can't, probably can't tell. It's knocked a chip out of this. The reason there's body filler there, like I said, is because we widened this, we widened this fender up and you had to put some filler on there. That's not thick, it's just the way it's at an angle right now. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna rough this up. And when I say rough it up, so that the body filler is thick. I mean, this is, if you could measure that, it's not even a 16th of an inch thick. The fact that it's tapered makes it look, look like it's thicker than that. So all I'm gonna do is rough this up so that the body filler is thick. And I'm gonna blow this off. Okay, you'll rarely see me do that and you'll rarely have to do it yourself. But the reason I just took my finger and wiped around that edge is because remember from the dent fixing video, I said we had to sand out past it so we didn't get any filler on the shiny because it won't stick. Well, I'm gonna keep this repair, this repair as small as possible. 
So I had body filler pulled onto an area that wasn't sanded. So I just quick wiped it off. And now this area is gonna get bigger. I'm gonna end up having sand scratches all the way up to here, but I don't want those 80 grit scratches up there. So I just took my finger and wiped it off. Now, I normally like to sand my body filler before it's gotten totally hard, but um, because it sands faster. Now the last coat I always let good, good and hard because it feather edges uh, a whole lot easier when it's real hard. This I let get real hard because it's so thin and it was on this edge. I don't want the scratches. I don't want to have to put another coat on here. I may have to put a little icing, which is a lightweight body filler, but I want to try and get this in one fill. So I let it get good and hard and I'm going to sand just, just this little bit of area and I want to try and keep all the scratches, the big ones, away from this area. When I say big scratches, deep ones like 80 grit and 180, I want to keep them to a minimum. All right, that didn't take very long. I knew I put it on time-lapse because it'd be boring for you guys to sit there and watch me. If you if you could pick up on it during the time-lapse, I switched over to 180 grit. Um, so all these scratches that are here are 180. Uh, now I'm gonna, gonna end up, and it's all feathered and it's fixed. I told you it, it wasn't much, it's, it's pretty much perfect. Um, I'm gonna have to go around here with some 320 grit scratches and get this area sanded so that the primer stick. But what I'm gonna be doing is, and I'm probably not gonna film it, I'll show it to you when I'm done, I'm gonna cut some of this off. I didn't take off much, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, but that cleaned that up nicely. Now I'm going to sand this. I got 320 by hand. And I'm just going to sand this area where the primer is going to go. I'm just doing it by hand. I'm not getting the DA out. This is important. I want every one of those. Remember, I started out with 80 grit. And then I got the 80 grit done, and then I went to 180. Now, if you can look, let me see. Can you see, let me see. See these little scratches right here? Those are still 80 grit scratches. I've got to get them out before I can prime. All right, I got rid of all those. Remember those scratches I just showed you that were up? Now, all the scratches that are in there are 320 grit scratches. Now, I'm gonna, gonna prime this. There's, I'm not gonna film me priming it. You've seen me prime before. I'll show you a picture when I get done priming it though. All right, the primer's on and it's flashed off. I mean, it's not dry, but it's flashed off. What I'm gonna do is using my time management, I'm gonna take a piece of 500 by hand, this 500 grit. Um, let's see if I can show you. Yeah, 500 to P stands for production. We'll get into that next year. Um, and I got 500 on a DA. There's no need for you really watch me saying it. I'm gonna sand all the shine off the rest of this fender. Now I'm, I'm gonna concentrate when we get done with this and I'll, I'll be doing that tomorrow. I'm gonna to let that primer sit overnight. I'm gonna just put color in this area and the trick's gonna to be to fade this black. You can see where it fades. Um, the customer said that they want a little more black this time, which we're gonna, we're gonna try and make him happy anyway. Well, that took me about five or six minutes to sand all that. I didn't sand the primer again. I like that to sit and do all the shrinking that it's gonna do overnight. Uh, tomorrow or the next day, we will, uh, I'll, I'll let you watch me paint it or I'll film me painting it. Cause this would be kind of neat when I put that little fade on there. All right, I've got this fender in the paint booth. I've got the fans running because you always want to blow this off and wipe it down with the exhaust fans running. 
I've got it on a bumper stand. This this stand here is for, well, you can hold anything with it, but it's set up for bumpers. I'm thinking one of the projects next year is we're gonna make a couple, uh, we're gonna build a couple stands just for painting motorcycle parts because we end up doing a lot of them here and they're fun to do as long as they don't get too fancy. And basically the stand's straight up and down and you take an old wheel off of like a bicycle or preferably an old motorcycle and you cut them in half and you weld them so that the fender will sit right down on top of them. They work nice. So I'm going to right now go get the paint gun. I had paint left or we had paint left from the first time we did this. And I'm just going to be putting color in here and I'll be blowing a little bit of color over a few of these spots. All this is covered up with the, with the, uh, the tag bracket, the license plate bracket, and the, and the tail light and all it covers all this up. But while I got paint in the gun, if I got enough, I'm going to, like I said, all this is covered up. You don't see any of it. Okay. Now, I'm going to go over, check my pattern on the gun, on the paper that's on the wall, then I'm going to come back and we'll tack it off. Okay, the very last step before you start painting, I've already wiped this down, you didn't see that. I'm going to take a tack rag, which is just a sticky, sticky cloth, and it's going to get any little dust particles or lint off of this thing. more coats. I'll see when that flashes off. Alright, this is going to be coat number three. If i got enough paint, I'm going to put a coat over the whole fender. Because if you remember, remember how I showed you in the first part of this video, the bottom of this thing was painted black. And he wanted, he wanted a look. When I do it this time, he wants more black on there, which is tricky. I'm going to film me doing it. But I figure I might as well cover up all the black so I can start fresh. That's if I got enough paint in here to do it.
Okay, I'm gonna let that flash off good. I'm gonna clean up the gun. I'm gonna put a little bit of black in there. After this flash is off, we'll try our best to get it faded in. All right, I got the black in the gun and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be spraying it with this same gun and it's just gonna be a, a, a blend job on the edge, uh, which I didn't think to bring my mini gun. I got a little mini paint gun at home. Um, I was gonna bring in for this. I can do it with this. So you're gonna see me go over to the wall once we get in the booth. I'm telling you about this out here because the booth's running and it's noisy. And I'm gonna cut the pattern down on this thing. And remember from the, the gun setup video how that works. So when I cut the pattern down, the air pressure is gonna increase, which can cause a run. So you're gonna see me do quite a bit of adjustment on the wall between the pattern, the, the fluid adjustment knob, which is how much I can pull the trigger back and then the air pressure of course to get get it to where I can hopefully do a good job of blending this around and the thing is this is black and that fender is that dark red it's really hard to see what you're doing so it's kind of tricky but I've just explained it to you before I get in there with all the noise what I'm doing over there against the end of the booth wall on that piece of paper
I think the next coat I'm gonna have to film from the outside. There's enough clear overspray. I don't want it getting on my phone here and messing the lens all up. I'm gonna give that about five minutes to flash off. Well, we really don't call it flash off time when it, with clear, but we're gonna give it about five minutes to set up. I ended up giving it about a 10, 12 minutes to dry because I really hammered that first coat on. And I got really slow hardener in it. The slower the hardener, the more chance you get it to have it run, but also the slicker it will be. It will flow out before it sets up. So I scooted my phone as far as back in the corner as I can get. I hope I don't get any overspray on it. So here we go. All right, um, this kind of stuff makes me nervous. I just walked out of there. I really put a super heavy second coat on there and I believe that's all it's gonna need. The type of clear I put on there is really good, but I don't like to build up too many layers on there to do something called solvent pop. But we're not gonna get into that right now. It looks great as long as it doesn't run in the floor, uh, it'll all be good. I'm gonna clean the gun out and I'll walk in there and walk around the fender and show you a picture of it in a minute. Let's walk in here and see what we got. It's only been a couple minutes, but just long enough for me to clean the gun out. Oh yeah. Looks nice. No trash in it. No runs, drips, or errors. Looks nice. See how the, the black's faded up? Pretty good. You, I don't know what you can see on this this tape or this film, or whatever you call it, but it, it turned out really nice. All right, guys, thanks for watching. All right, guys, it's uh, it's Friday. It's the end of week three. <clears throat> uh, so two more weeks, and you guys are all done officially. Um. I just walked in the classroom here. I got done clearing that fender that I'm making this video for. It's just a little job and I just wanted to kind of showcase it to show you, you know, that it, it wasn't that big a deal to fix it. I knew all the steps and you watched everything I did. Now, granted you freshmen uh, haven't really mixed a lot of body filler or anything, but you saw how easily I repaired that. And it was basically just knowing how to do this stuff. Uh, Obviously, you'll refine your painting skills. I don't expect everybody to be able to go into paint booth and be a Rembrandt right off the bat, but uh, you'll get better at those kinds of things. And that was just a neat little fun project to film and, and show you. I am working right now <clears throat> trying to figure out what I'm going to do for next week assignment for all my different classes. Believe it or not, it's, it's quite hard. When I have you in here, we have projects out there to work on and we have the book and we go over it. There's a, there's wonderful content, content in our collision repair, repair book that I have. A couple of you that are doing the take home packets may have this book with you and you look through it. It's a great resource to have. Got a lot of stuff in there. You will find in this class that I like to be in the shop as much as possible, but learning the theory, the, the why about things, is really important. It keeps you safe and it lets you do a better job. And obviously, you, you when you talk to somebody, it shows that you know what you're talking about. So 
Anyway, guys, I just wanted to say hey to you for a minute. And please, if you got any questions or anything, comment in the videos. I think I've been able to turn it on on all the videos now. I miss you guys and uh, can't wait to get started in here next year. Thanks. Bye.